you never see a stray greyhound. Right, okay, if you're here, you won't see a greyhound wandering the roads because a, a, a lot of the Irish know about it. The police know it, especially if they see a greyhound, they just go up to it. The dog will come up to people, right? Okay, so the dog comes up to people, they look at their ears, they see the owners, they bring straight away us. We say, What number? Put it into the computer, yeah, that belongs to bring it into us here, we look after it, we give it to the person. So if somebody was to release the dog into the wild like that, we would come down on them like bricks. And like, there's a whole fining procedure in the courts and all the rest, it's an offence to do that, you know, right? So we would take it very, 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 very. I'd like to welcome the members of the, uh, the board and staff here today, and uh, I'd like to make a few points. Um, in 2014, Board Nagan received 10.84 million in state funding. Um, I discussed this matter with Minister Hayes, who has responsibility for Board Nagan, and he initi initiated the Indicon report, which was due out early this year, but eventually came out. Uh, in the last few months. During that discussion, a lot of issues came up with regard to Board of Gone, a lot of issues that we had concern about. But when the report came out, in all honesty, the credibility of Board of Gone was shot, shot dead. Because the report is, 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 is horrendous in relation to not alone the financial situation within Board of Gone, but the governance within the whole area of greyhound, the greyhound industry, the regulation within the greyhound industry, the whole issue of doping of dogs and the follow-up on that. about the re rebuild of Limerick, for example, and, and the redesign of the first bend there in particular, and some of the legal issues that are, have pertained to that, injuries to, to, to animals, etc. I think really um, one of the biggest issues I'm hearing is around the doping of dogs and the, and the amount of using an, an enhancers to, to en and drugs to enhance their performance, that that really is uh, uh, dealing a death blow to the whole industry. Uh, in 2012, I understand that there were 6,000 samples taken from dogs, but up until January of this year, only 17 results of those tests well, have been Yesterday, published. I spoke to Brian Purcell of the Irish Greyhound Board about the welfare issue. You know, how would you characterise the way in which retired greyhounds are, are being treated? While there is improvement, do you still see that there is a problem in the numbers that are being discarded? We well, were actually quite fortunate in that there was a great piece of legislation drafted and passed by the Dáil in 2011, the Greyhound Welfare Act 2011, which is probably the strongest piece of legislation for any animal in the world. That there was a great piece of legislation drafted and passed by the Dáil in 2011, the Greyhound Welfare Act 2011, which is probably the strongest piece of legislation for any animal in the world. <laughs> The IGB's own bo uh, the findings from the Endicon report show that the IGB even were questioning the control committee's findings, and the control committee was actually rubbishing samples that were taken uh, on certain occasions. Uh, and it does Let's raise talk questions. to Conor Ryan, investigative correspondent with the Irish Examiner. Conor, good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is uh, this has been a long time in, in coming, I guess. It's it's it follows some very difficult years for the Greyhound Board. How much trouble are they in? 
Um, they're in a huge amount of trouble, according to the report by Indicon, which was delivered to Minister Tom Hayes yesterday. Um, in effect, they're mired in debt and don't have the ability to repay it based on their own fi five-year strategic plan, which was released last year. Investigations have been launched here and in France following the discovery of 11 dead greyhounds in a vehicle on board an Irish ferries vessel on Monday afternoon. The animals' bodies were examined by a vet who boarded the Oscar Wilde when it docked in Cherbourg. He determined they had smothered during the 14-hour journey from Ross Lair. The driver of the vehicle was arrested but later released. Joining me in studio now, our reporter, Joe McGreeley. Um, Joe, this happened on Monday, but details just emerging. What happened? Yes, indeed. Uh, the discovery was made just after 2 p.m. on Monday, and it seems that these 11 greyhounds were transported in a van, in cages within that van, and uh, just as the ferry docked, it was discovered that they, they were all what dead. the department and uh, Board Nagan had to say this evening? Yeah, the department and Board Nagan here are also investigating it, uh, and they are basically trying to determine whether or not Irish and EU animal transport regulations were violated in this case. Emotions here tonight, some fine displays, but Bowl Sports Hero was the, the sad note of the evening. Oh, without question, it's definitely took the gloss off the evening. A bad injury, it has to be said, there's no point in lying about it. It was a bad injury, he was in an ideal position. A lot of people didn't think he could turn his ghost in to go Jack and Emer Superstar. It was the one night, I've watched him plenty much over the last few weeks, and it was the one night he actually did break relatively well. He was in an ideal position, he was just hitting the front off the second bend, and well, that's ground racing, but it's a sad note I to. I your speech kick today, off. Minister, very comforting, but I was actually. None of us are in the mood for comforting because um, all the senators have spoken today. You know, we all know the allegations against Board Nagon are very serious at the moment. I mean, what went on in the PAC last November, the Limerick scandal, you know, the, the misuse of taxpayers' money. For the first time in seven years, we're seeing a dramatic increase in the available funding for the horse racing and greyhound industry uh, because we have a new income stream from that sector. Um, Michael Noonan and myself um, are introducing a new piece of legislation which means that we're going to make about 25 million euros next year from online betting tax. Um, and so we are going to put some of that money directly into the horse industry and greyhound industry which is where most betting takes place. Uh, so that we can support this sector in terms of growth uh, and expansion into the future. that there's been people involved in, re in controlling how things are regulated in the greyhound industry that should not be involved in it. There's some serious conflict of interest as well where uh, the control board that you're talking about, the chairman of this particular board actually has dogs in training with a guy who has actually been found to be guilty of, do of doping dogs. Now, I mean, how in God's name can this be allowed to happen? I think there has to be a serious look at who has been involved. And as you know, only uh, recently in September, the Greyhound Board in Britain made a statement saying, warning English buyers from purchasing dogs in Ireland because they were drug ridden. Thank now, you. how bad is this? I mean, the thing. I'll let you back in again. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think we need to be very, very careful in relation to uh, uh, drawing a line across and saying this industry is full of uh, people that are breaking the law in, in relation. But that's what's been said, and that's the perception. I attend a lot of tracks up and down the country, uh, several functions, and I hear this all the time. But when you go into the detail, and I want to be quite clear, since we published uh, the Indicon report, and in that there are rec uh, several recommendations in relation to regulation. We're going to implement that. There is no room in this industry for anybody that's breaking the law. We're quite clear on it, and we're going to move as fast as we possibly can.
if you have full faith in the board members of the IGB.